Today we're going to be discussing Modbus Touchscreen PLC programming. Here's our agenda. We'll start with a brief introduction, then we will do a live demonstration showing you how to create a project with HMI Work software with buttons and widgets, displaying temperature, and creating multiple pages. We'll also show you how to read and write to the touchscreen controller's memory. If you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the chat box. I'm Maria Lamoni, sales manager here at icp USA, and have Robert Morrell from our technical support department with me. icp was established in 1993. Our headquarters is located in Shinshu, Taiwan. icp USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. We have over 200 R&D engineers and work closely with them to support you. For any large projects you're working on that will use over $200,000 in hardware, we will provide you with free programming and systems integration service. Please contact our sales department for details. Touchscreen PLCs combine an HMI and controller all in one since they can run one program and have a touchscreen interface on board. They are programmable in C language and ladder logic. They come with free HMI Works development software for creating applications. They're available in different configurations and support a variety of protocols including ASCII, Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, and Ethernet communication. Some come with a USB port or Ethernet port designed for uploading programs. For others, you can use a USB to serial or Ethernet to serial converter for uploading programs. Here's an overview of our touchscreen controllers. They come with a 2.8 inch, 3.5 or 4.3 inch touchscreen display. The TPD280 series have a 2.8 inch touchscreen and are communicable over RS-485 and Modbus RTU or Ethernet and Modbus TCP. The TPD283 can only be powered over Ethernet. The U versions have a real-time clock and a USB port for uploading programs. The TPD283U has an Ethernet port and can be powered over Ethernet or via 10 to 30 VDC through the terminal block. The TPD430 series is similar but with a 4.3 inch display. The VPD130 can communicate over RS-485 and Modbus RTU. VPD models are IP65 front panel mount so you can mount them in a panel and they'll be dust tight and protected against water jets. The VPD-132, VPD-133, VPD-142, and VPD-143 support XV IO expansion boards so you can put the boards inside to add inputs and outputs. All of the touchpads integrate easily with remote IO modules. You can connect IO modules over the RS-232 RS-485 or Ethernet ports. You can daisy chain RS-485 and Modbus RTU type I.O. modules together. If you want to use many Ethernet I.O., you can use Ethernet switches or you can daisy chain our Ethernet I.O. modules that have dual Ethernet ports. You can mount the VPD series on a DIN rail or in a panel. You can mount the TPD-280 series in an electrical wall mount outlet or external wall mount boxes. We provide external wall mount boxes or you can get standard ones from a hardware store like Home Depot. So we have different wall mount boxes for the TPD-280 type series and the TPD-430 type series. TPD-432F has a flange mount for mounting in a panel. HMI Works development software is an easy to use SLE language and pro uh, ladder logic programming environment. It uses Modbus and Decon protocols, so you can easily integrate it with your devices. Many widgets are available, so you can add shapes, text, pictures, lines, buttons, timers, sliders, and labels any way you want. Many demo programs are available. If you need a simple program, let us know, as we can likely make it for you for free, or we can show you how to make it over a web-based meeting. The HMI Works standard workspace has a frame design space where you can design your screens. There's a workspace and toolbox on the left for adding drivers, tags, and using widgets. 
there's a menu bar at the top you can use to open, save, and compile projects. There's an inspector and libraries area on the right that you can use to set properties for things you added with the widgets like specifying a color for buttons, changing text properties like bold or the size. There's a results window at the bottom for debugging and error messages. This is what the ladder designer looks like. You can use the buttons through the graphical user interface or you can use the function buttons on your keyboard to add contacts, coils, function blocks, and jump operations. You can add devices in the workspace and tool area and map it up with a click after you find a button from the library's area. You can place it on the screen wherever you'd like. TPD 430, our 4.3-inch touchscreen PLC, is being used at our headquarters for theater automation. The same program we use comes as a demo program with our 4.3-inch touchpads. The touchpads connected to I.O. equipment over the RS-485 bus. The I.O. equipment is configured to turn on and off the lights and fan and to control the temperature. The TPD430 is connected over RS-485 to a LINPAC, Linux-based programmable automation controller, which has a web server. The web server is published over the local area network and has a similar program that allows for theater automation through a standard web browser from any Android smartphone. I will now pass the presentation over to Robert for a demonstration on how to use buttons, widgets, displaying temperatures, creating pages, and reading and writing to memory. If you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the chat box and we will answer them after the demonstration. Okay, let's see, here's my agenda. Uh, what I hope to teach you during this brief time that we have, uh, first of all, I'll teach you how to create a project in HMI Works, how to make a connection to tags or connection and tags using Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU. Um, I'll show you how to, or I'll go over our widgets. I'll show you how to make multiple pages in HMI Works, and finally, how to display tag values. Let's get started. Okay, when you first open up HMI Works and create a new project, you'll come to this screen uh, where you'll be able to select uh, our, the TPD model or VPD model, which you're, you'll be using. Uh, you must uh, create a name for the project. For this one, I'll call it training and today's date. Oops. I will use our TPD 433 since it has both Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU connectivity through a serial port and an Ethernet port. <coughs> I will make it in landscape view and it will use ladder logic as my default programming language. But you are allowed to have one programming language per screen or per frame for the touchpad. Um, let's see, we'll get started. Um, okay, this right here is your workspace, which whatever you create is like a WYSIWYG setting where what you see is what you get will be displayed here. Uh, this is our workspace and our toolbar, our toolbox. <coughs> Using the workspace, you can navigate throughout your project. This project, or, or this line right here is your ladder program, or I'm sorry, your program name. This is your ladder program. We'll make connections using the connection tab, and we'll use or create tags using the tags fields. Uh, your toolbox, this is where uh, all the widgets and drawing utilities are. We'll go over those one by one. First, I want to show you how to make a connection. <clears throat> the first step in making a connection is you click on connection, and you right click on connection and select New Connection. From here, you can name the connection. Uh, by default, it comes up TCP IP underscore one, but you can also change that if you prefer. I'll just leave it at that since I will create a Modbus TCP connection first, and then I'll follow up with the Modbus R2 connection 
<coughs> using COM1. So you first name your connection, then you use the drop-down box, select what type you're connecting. Uh, you enter your IP address for the connection. This would be your slave ID, or I'm sorry, IP address for your slave module. .255.1 is what I'll use. <coughs> and by default, the modbus port is 502, so we'll leave it at that. And if I want to create a Modbus R2 connection, I just do new connection. We'll call this serial. We'll select COM1, and we'll set the COM port properties, the baud rate, data bits, parity, and stop bit options for the connection. So all devices must be uh, communicating at the same baud rate and with the same parity options. <clears throat> and then the next step is we create our device. This is the important step to differentiate between the two. Okay, let's see. For this line, the most important is selecting what function the touchpad will have to the, this device or these devices. Uh, for the Ethernet connection, I'll make a Modbus TCP connection where the touchpad will be a Modbus master and will communicate with Modbus TCP slaves. So I'll select Modbus master. <clears throat> uh, we have most of our popular series here, or you can use user-defined. For this demonstration, I'll just use user-defined and show you how to make a quick connection. You must select what connection you're using. Notice the two that I connected, TCP IP and serial, show up here. So since I'm connecting to a Modbus TCP device, I'll use my Ethernet connection. I'll select TCP IP, and then I'll click Edit, <coughs> and I'll input my tag count. Since this demonstration will show you how to uh, display a temperature value, I'll just uh, use AI and <coughs> uh, count of four registers. So we'll click OK, and my Modbus ID would go here. Since it's one, I will just leave it there. <coughs> OK, now my tags show up here under device 1. I should have named this Modbus TCP, but for this example, just know that device 1 is Modbus TCP. Now I'll create a second device, <coughs> which will be Modbus RTU Master. So the touchpad will be a Modbus RTU Master uh, through the serial port. And we'll name it um, Mod RTU. So we'll differentiate. Slave name, we'll just call it <coughs> module. And net ID, we'll use one. <coughs> and we'll just, actually, we'll create <coughs> a user-defined module. And we'll just input some AI registers <coughs> to do a similar function. OK, if you want, and let's see over here, my device shows up here. This is my Modbus RTU module. <clears throat> the next step is to create some virtual tags. Virtual tags can be used to save values to memory temporarily or write values uh, to display in other <coughs> uh, modules. So first thing to do is right click on virtual, create a new tag. For this, we'll call it temperature, and we'll call it uh, page change. OK, let's see. So I've created two virtual tags and two module connections. The next thing I want to show you is how to uh, create a second page. You simply come up here to HMI. I'm sorry. Go to Layout, I'm sorry, and then click New Frame. <clears throat> and you select the default program language. I'll also use Ladder for the second page. Notice at the bottom it only has Frame 1 currently. Once I click this button, you'll see a Frame 2. Now there's two pages in which Frame 1 is the first one that shows up. If you want to drag and drop them, you can uh, resort them this way if you want to later. For now, I'll leave frame one as the main frame. <clears throat> so we'll use our toolbox to, first of all, create a title. 
let's call this mod, oops, I'm sorry. We modify the text over here in the inspector. Modbus RTU page. And we'll adjust the font over here by clicking on the three dots. <coughs> And we'll select bold, and we'll make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> OK. And then the second page, we'll just copy this and paste. And we'll modify the text to say Modbus TCP page. <clears throat> OK, so now we have two pages in our project. One is called Modbus RTU page. The second is called Modbus TCP page. OK, and let's see, to draw images on the page, you can use our drawing utilities right here. You could draw arrows, ellipses, text boxes, as we, I've shown you. A picture box, if you want to display a picture. You can draw lines. <coughs> and you can use our widgets and system functions to also add other images to the screen. The text push button is simply a text box with a <coughs> Work some words in it. So like I'll put page, or actually we'll put Modbus RTU. And we will <coughs> click on it again to edit it. And we'll use the go to frame function. And we will make this one, since it's on frame two, go to frame one. And we'll create a similar one. Oh, and we also need to make it look a little bit better. So we'll adjust the font size a little bit to 10 and see if that fits. If it doesn't fit, we could enlarge the button. So I'll cheat a little bit and just enlarge the button so it fits. <clears throat> and then to display the value, I'll use our label widget. The label widget will numerically show the value of the temperature. Uh, for this, I will just use our tag name. And let's see, let's assume that we are on the TCP page, so that's the first one. We'll assume this is our temperature value on the TCP connection. <coughs> and then we'll do the same thing on this page. Create a label widget. Uh, select it. Select our tag name. Uh, module here is our Modbus RTU connection. And then we also want to make another text push button to switch between the two pages. Unfortunately, we don't have a simulation on this, but we can <coughs> oops, name it Modbus TCP. <coughs> and the function of this button will be it'll change between pages. So then what we want to do is use the go to frame feature and make this one go to frame 2. <coughs> So now we've created a web page with uh, a label widget, which will display both a Modbus TCP and a Modbus RTU value, and have buttons to transfer between pages. To edit the color of the background, you simply right-click or click on the screen, and then select background and select the color. We can make it green. And we'll have a green page for this one. and. We'll make this one a light blue page to differentiate between the two. If you have some logic you need to perform, you can use our workspace or go to workspace tab, click on program. You can use our ladder designer if you choose ladder programming, or you can use a timer widget if you're C programming. <clears throat> to create a ladder program, let's see, you can create some Let's see, inputs, just associate it with, let's see, I created a virtual tag. So I'll use that as a page change. And then what we'll do is we'll use a function block to assign a page number. So we can double click up here. And we can use our system, I believe, or user defined. User defined go to page function. And you simply reference a number here. Let's put 
a constant value of 1. <clears throat> so now whenever I trigger the page change tag, it will go to frame 1. So now I must do file, save and close. And I'm going to go to frame 2 and just simply replace the tag. Instead of using the go to frame value, I will use the tag name. And this is a second way of changing pages. If you have multiple pages or want to keep a reference, that would, this would be an example of one way to do it. So whenever this button is pushed, it will trigger the condition to be true and will allow you to change pages. Um, let's see, once this project is downloaded to your touchpad, uh, assuming your Modbus connections are correct and your communication parameters are right, you will be able to see a temperature value in these label widgets. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is if you wanted to use a slider widget and had a background picture, you can use this as an up-down scale. You must specify your minimum and maximum, 32 and 212, for instance, as the min and max. And then you select your tag name here, or tag name here, rather. <coughs> and let's see, I created a temperature tag. OK, uh, any questions on this? If anyone has any questions in the chat box, uh, you can type it there, or you can ask it verbally, or you can call us if you have any other questions. Yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, type them in the chat box. If you want to see something in particular, uh, Robert could show you something now also. Just sure. uh, type it in the chat box. And if you don't have any questions right now, you can always contact us later by uh, email or phone, or we also have a web chat on our website. Um, there's a question, Robert. How are you correlating software instructions to actual machine operation? So I think um, he's asking, how does this actually communicate to the machine? So I know you would communicate for one way you could do it is you can communicate over Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP uh, to a PLC that might be running the machine? Yes, or the assumption is that you have both Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU slave devices connected to this. Uh, those would be the registers that you're reading data from. <clears throat> Does that answer your question? Well, he's asking about um, to actual machine operation. Um. If you wanted to control machine operation and the uh, device you're communicating to also had write registers, you could, for instance, write a digital output value to, say, a, a 1 or a 0 to trigger an alarm condition. Let me show you a quick example of that. Let me go and, um, back to Shakar, I'll also unmute your microphone in case you want to talk and um, ask anything further about your question. Okay, let's see. Oops. So for instance, alarm will be a digital tag. We will associate that. Let me move this over. Let me go over to our library. I'm going to use a light to indicate an alarm condition. And let's just pick this one, drag it over, and let's see, oops, let me actually delete that. Let me show you a quick way to do it. <clears throat> okay, so what you do is you go to your library, select an image, right? Let's just choose this one, and let's drag over alarm, and let's see, then we'll go back to our inspector and select our device. Notice that our alarm tag was associated with the object in the library. So now what we'll do is we'll go to our ladder programming and we'll create a new function. We'll use a function block. Let's see, let's just do greater than or equals. So if analog input, which is our temperature, 
is less than intra constant of say 50 degrees. See, since I'm using greater than or equal to, we want to do a lower limit alarm. Then we'll create another function block, which will simply assign a value of 1 to our alarm output. Now this would do it a one time and will show that the alarm happened. If you wanted to, you could just use this and also do the same thing if you only wanted to display the alarm condition while the condition is true. <clears throat> That's the difference between the two. Did that answer your question, Shakar? Okay, and then also like how it relates to the actual machine. I guess it would depend on the machine and what's running the machine. But if you were to build some machine from scratch, uh, for example, you could do so with a PLC um, and I/O modules. And um, you know, depends on what you want the machine to do. Uh, then you would be able to have the touchpad. Uh, communicate with the machine over the Modbus protocol so the, the machine itself could have a program running uh, on a different platform like for example we have a wind pack and you can have a machine with IO modules and daughter boards connected um, as necessary then you could also have the touchpad uh, communicating through the Modbus registers so I think um, you know a way to explain that is the wind pack has memory locations you can just think of them like you know boxes that hold information and then you can share that information with the touchpad to show the status so say the wind pack is connected to a float sensor and there's a 4, four to 20 milliamp um, analog input module connected to the wind pack PL, uh, programmable automation controller then you can pass back that 4 to 20 milliamp value which might be attached to a, a float sensor in a tank so then that way you can map up a tank um, a tank level indicator on the touchpad through the Modbus register. So it's kind of like there's a memory location in the wind pack um, and the touchpad can get the data from that memory location and then display it on a screen. Well, also the idea is the touchpad is acting as a controller in this application. If, for instance, you were writing to a Modbus slave that is a PLC that set up as a Modbus slave in this case, you could actually specify a digital output coil here and write to that specific coil as well. I only have analog inputs here, but you would see digital outputs here. So you can essentially, if this were, say, a digital output, you could just write to it or select it as a tag, and then it would write the value of a 1 or 0 as it happens and save that in the PLC as well. Let me just create that, actually. Let me do File, Save, and Close. And then we'll just modify this device so that it has, let's see, three. And let's go with one digital output. The digital output would be a Modbus, let's see, in this case, TCP digital output. And we will just go back to our ladder programmer and change this tag instead of alarm to our DO tag. And now, when the analog input value goes, is, I'm sorry, is above 50 degrees, then it would turn on an output or assign a one value to the alarm register. OK, any more questions? Another question um, from Francisco. Does the HMI Works need a physical device to show the program running, or is there a virtual run, too? Um, uh, you do need the physical touchpad to show the operation. We don't have a simulation built into HMI Works. Do you happen to know if it's coming in the future, Robert? People have asked for it. 
they'd consider it, but I haven't gotten a definitive answer as to when or if they actually are going to implement it. So if we add that in the future, we'll, we'll put that in the newsletter. Any other questions? Let me just go back to the main environment. So this is what you'd see on the touchpad itself. And the logic I just designed will be running in the background. And when you push the buttons to change pages, you'll see the opposite page. And then if if anyone wants to um, arrange a, a web-based presentation where we talk about just your application and we can talk about the pages and, and help to put that together, uh, just let us know. Um, so I guess that concludes our training and um, hope we can help with any projects. Uh, thanks for coming and um, have a great day.